So firstly, John, have you seen the movie yet? And was it difficult for you to watch what you and your family went through? Yes, I have seen the film, uh, the film. And of course it, of course it uh, brought tears to my eyes, you know, seeing this film for the, uh, this was, I've, when I saw it the first time, what really hit me hard was seeing how the community reacted. Mm -hmm. Because me being in a coma, I, I didn't get a chance to see it. So seeing everyone, how they reacted to the film, definitely hit me harder than my own personal character. Yeah, it was also nice to see how Facebook was used and social yes. media was used in a positive way. Yes, yes. That, uh, well, it's amazing because we'd put one thing out on Facebook, my family would, and it would go to Switzerland, to Germany, to Finland. It, it would go around the world just through Facebook. So it's, yeah, like you said, it's amazing to see how social media can be used for good. Mm. So it wasn't just the community praying for you, it was the whole world yes. in a way? Yes, it, it was, and we were, we were all stunned. I mean, my, uh, I have a good friend who lives in Germany, and he goes, this story gives me chicken skin, meaning uh, uh, chills and all, that <laughs> okay. sort of thing. So he, it's just, it, it is amazing to see how the world has been affected. Yes. Now, you guys both share a love of basketball. So have you had any chance to shoot some hoops together? Yes, yeah. we did in Full Winnipeg. Game. We did in Winnipeg. Yes. We played like up to 11, something yes, like that. something like that. And everyone was, like the, the Vaughn was watching the game. It was, it was really fun because it came out of nowhere. We were... He was dressed nice. I, I that scene was when we were shooting the church scene. So I was, <laughs> it was crazy because we were just playing around and I was getting ready for a really emotional scene. But I, I just wanted to play basketball, mm. <laughs> and I was in a in a like long sleeve button down shirt and a tie, and we made it happen. We moved some, we Chair, moved some yeah, chairs, chairs and, and, tables. and tables around, and we're lucky that there was a court there to play. Oh, I'm glad you guys had some fun. Did you get a chance to meet executive producer Steph Curry? Uh, I am meeting him tonight, actually, and he has already. So. I met him, and I, I'm happy to, to meet him again. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a highlight. Yes. 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 Now, what was it like shooting that dramatic scene on the ice, that rescue scene, and what was the process like on set? Every day, every day was a challenge, and every day was a process, and and there were so many scenes that it was. This is the most important scene in in the movie. So. The, so many scenes were the most important scenes in the movie. There was not just one, and this was one of them. Um, and it took it took a village to to make this happen, and it was you couldn't imagine it until you saw it. So, so once I, I saw those scenes, it was powerful. I felt like I was actually going through it. Mm -hmm. And after shooting that scene um, for so long and then struggling with it, that's the first time that I really got into the character so much that I would see myself in the mirror and I thought I was actually John Smith and I was going through this. Wow. And it was the first time that I that I wasn't like seeing myself as Marcel, which has never happened to me with acting for a character. Oh, that's incredible. Uh, John, you went through an extraordinary experience. Mm -hmm. So finally, before we wrap up, I have to ask you, did it change you in any way? Yes, I mean, be, be being a Christian, I'm Assemblies of God to be more specific, you know, falling in the ice before I wasn't saved or pronouncing as a Christian, and even after I wasn't being a Christian. And this is a faith-based film, but you know, seeing God transform my life and seeing how he's brought amazing people like Marcel into my life and you know, getting to talk to him and just be friends, being brothers, and you know, seeing how breakthrough is a community story. It's not just about me and you know, even what I went through. It has changed my life, but it's also changing the world's life. So I love movies that are based on true events. <laughs> I feel like it gives the themes more strength and it makes the movie very powerful. So Devon, was this important in attracting you to the project? Yes, I mean, I love true stories. I have, uh, you know, over the course of my Hollywood career, have had the opportunity to be involved in a lot of, you know, successful true stories. And there's just something that motivates me personally as a moviegoer, um, when you can find the miraculous in the truth. And so I am drawn to stories like this, and certainly the breakthrough story is no exception. Uh, meeting John and Joyce and Pastor Jason years ago and hearing their story firsthand, it motivated me then, it motivates me now. And the moment that I heard it, I knew I had to help bring it to the screen. And Roxanne, that dramatic scene on the ice with the ice rescue, what was mm -hmm. it like to film that? Because it was so realistic. It was a uh Logistically, the most uh, difficult part of the movie to film, uh, we were on the actual frozen uh, lake for two days and then three more days yeah. in tanks. <laughs> it was cold. Yeah, it was very, very cold because yeah. it's not just a frozen lake, it's a frozen lake in Winnipeg. Right. And so <laughs> it was majorly sub-zero temperatures out there. Um, but we made it through that. Then we had three days in tanks, uh, one a deep tank for the underwater sequences and then one that was a shallow tank for the at-water sequences, you know, for the boys that were hanging onto the ice and the whole rescue scene. Um, and uh, it was mostly just a, a logistical plan that we had to put together uh, with storyboards and where every department got on board and it was just a teamwork that went 
relatively smoothly, I have mm -hmm. to say. It really did. We were very well prepared. And um, hopefully you did think it was real because uh, that's what we were going for. Yeah. Well, they had a great director to guide them. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so true. Yes. Now, this story is about the power of prayer. So have you guys ever had your prayers answered? Oh, oh, my goodness, yes, we're this. here. The movie is done. My prayers <laughs> yes, are answered. Yes, this is it. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. That's what your cast was saying as well. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's amazing that they feel the same way. Oh, wow. Good. I'm That's glad nice. to hear that. That's sync. fantastic. Yes. Now, how involved were the Smith family? Have they seen the movie yet? What oh, was yeah. their reaction? They were involved um, all the, I mean, every step of the way. Yeah. I mean, since the moment that I met them to this very moment, They've been involved in the script development. They came to set. Mm -hmm. Roxanne went out to St. Louis, met with them. So it's mm -hmm. important. I mean, we say this all the time that, that for us, this is a movie. Um, no matter how much we're excited about it, it's a movie. Mm -hmm. We're going to go on and do another film. But for them, this is their life. You don't get a chance to do life again here. So we really want to do right by it. And so the fact that they've been involved and then have seen the film and say that they, they think we did a good job, yeah. that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that thumbs up was important to yes. get from them. And you have a bit of a story that, a uh, personal story about your own adoption and when you read the script, how you felt a connection. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, I have an adopted daughter. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I definitely did feel that kind of connection that Joyce um, has with John. Mm -hmm. um, I think some people think that perhaps there's a different kind of connection with an adopted child. I have both a biological daughter and an adopted daughter and they're two photos that I have in my office. One is when my biological daughter was handed to me in the hospital and I have a look on my face when I first hold her for the, that very first moment. And then when my daughter in China was handed to me and I held her, her for the first time, she was eight months old, and the look on my face is identical because a mother's love is a mother's love. Our children come to us in different ways and blood is not the connection. Love is the connection. And awesome. a mother's love is a very strong connection. Wow, that's beautiful. Finally, what would you like audiences to take away from watching this movie? Hope, uh, love, the power of prayer, community. And the thing that Joyce did, which I find just so powerful, and I'm trying to practice this every day in my life, is to speak life. You know, she, walked, she went in that emergency room and she spoke life over John. And as a result, uh, he now has life. And I think there's something really powerful when we stop speaking negative and we start speaking yes. positive over every area of our life. So guys, when I watched the movie, I found it interesting that both of your characters are quite practical, but by the end of the movie, neither could deny that a miracle had occurred. Can you explain how your characters come to this conclusion? Well, from my point of view, um, I was a doctor of record and a scientist. And just being that way, you know that there are certain realities that just have to be true. And when they turn out not to be, for instance, I mean, this young man spent 20 minutes under the water, okay, should have some kind of bacterial infection. Uh, then to come out and not uh, be, you know, breathing on his own for up to 45 minutes, well, you expect some brain damage. You know, you don't expect this young man to come out unscathed. And uh, you, you don't expect him to be alive, for one. So when that is dashed, I say, I know that there's something special happening here, and I have to put in, put in my work and, you know, try to save this kid's life. And then his mom just keeps praying, keeps praying, and prays for me to be the best I can be. And then when you finally, uh, the, finally the kid wakes up and there's no brain damage. There's no bacteria uh, infection, bacterial infection. That's a miracle. Yeah. And what about your character, Mike? Yeah, you know, my character is Tommy Shine, and, and some of the stuff is is starting. I'm starting to realize as we as we discuss it. It's like you know, how many times does this person come to the scene and pull out a body? You know, mm -hmm. how many how many how many dead people has he has he has he um, come into contact with? After a while, I mean, that's what you expect. I mean, there's a certain amount of fine, a finite amount of time in which you expect to pull out a person who's who's savable, mm -hmm. who's you can resuscitate. And after a certain time, you know, it's like they talked about in the film. It's like this certain amount of time. It's like okay, now we're looking for a body. Um, so at that moment, around that moment, that's when he heard this voice. Pulls the body out. They're doing the best they can. They're applying all the all their um, all their techniques. But he doesn't expect this kid to live. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think he, you know, made peace with that. You know, it's a time, a, a space of mourning afterwards. Like I, I got to just come to terms with another loss. You know, it's it's what your field um, requires. You live with loss, but this time, 
this kid is still fighting for his life. Now he's like, kid this be. And, and so the journey for him is is as is, is important to him as anybody else because for him, it would give him hope. Imagine having one one time where this actually works out. How does that affect you for the rest of your time yeah. it, it, as, when you go to work? You know, you're going, wait a minute, I have, a, I have purpose before, but hey, I mean, this is, this is, I mean, it's got to be an uplifting story for him, mm -hmm. you know? And this movie is about the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. Have either of you ever had your prayers answered? Well, I'm here. Constantly. I'm here. Yeah. And, you know, this is, this is, I'm here, literally. It's like, yeah, I mean, could have been, could have been not here for many number of reasons. Mm -hmm. And they're still working. Mm -hmm. Yes. Still praying. <laughs> That's great. Now, what was it like filming that dramatic scene out there on the ice, the rescue scene? Well, you know, first thing is funny. When, when we signed up for I think that was my main requirement. I, I said, well, listen. I'm not getting into a frozen lake. That was that was like I'm not I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it. I'm like there's just no way I'm going to subject myself to that. And I was no no we we, we have we're going to figure this. We, it's not going to be that. But we did have to go to a frozen lake to film a, a, a very large portion of it in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, um, I hope to break even you don't know, want to break anyone's um, spirits. But we did a green screen effect and we had a large tank. And I got to tell you, watching the film, I didn't see it, it was very well done. Um, so. Yes, I had to go on a frozen lake, but no, I did not have to go into the icy waters of a frozen lake. Um, it was a really interesting process. Actually, I was much, much hotter filming that scene because the water was actually brought to temperature to keep um, to keep the, the young men warm because they were not wearing what I was wearing, which is supposed to keep you warm in icy temperatures. Uh -huh. So I'm actually sweating inside of, of that, of that um, mm -hmm. costume, believe it or not. And Dennis, how did you uh, prepare for your role of Dr. Garrett? You know, just being as practical as I can. I mean, I couldn't take eight years of medical school. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't? You didn't? You didn't? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so a lot of it was just, you know, you know, created, you know, uh, you know, on the, not on the spot, but, you know, you know, weeks ahead, weeks before. And, uh, you know, because I, I came from South Africa to winter peg as I call it <laughs> because it was cold um, but as this doctor you know it, I just had to get to the practical state of where doctors come from mm -hmm. uh, and to understand and believe that they are scientists and they really don't have time for faith you know because mm -hmm. they're dealing with practical matters you know right down the line what's going to happen to this kid I mean you know the bacterial infections you know or you know there were so many reasons why he shouldn't be alive. Mm -hmm. That's what I had to think about. And to find out that now he is still alive, I had to figure why. Mm -hmm. When you read the script about this true story, what was it that connected with you personally and made you want to be attached to this project? Oh, a few things. Um, you know, I've always felt like I believed in, in myself or something when nobody else did, much like Joyce believed in John's, you know, healing and recovery and that it was going to happen. Um, um, you know, we're all searching for something. We're all trying to find our purpose. Um, our ego is, and our pride can really sort of kill uh, our dreams. And, and so much of, you know, Joyce, she's a, a real person, but she had to eventually like surrender and trust that the bigger picture was it wasn't in her time and it wasn't her outcome, but like relinquishing that control. And I think, I mean, of course for me personally, I do that all the time, that it's, I don't always know what's best. I think I do, but I don't always know what's best. And I think everyone can relate to that. And those through lines for me are really important. Were you able to meet with Joyce and the family in preparation for your role? Yeah, we didn't We didn't meet to prepare. I mean, of course, I read her book, The Impossible, and I spoke to Devon, our producer, and Roxanne, our director, and got a really good sense of her and her essence. But it wasn't until we were halfway through the movie when we actually met. And it was, um, it was really wonderful. And, you know, you just want to, like... I wanted to ask her so many questions and I wanted to hug her and, you know, she got teary and then I got teary and it was just, it was a wonderful moment that um, was really special. There's one scene in the movie where after you uh, get the phone call about your son's accident and I really felt how your life can be turned upside down in a moment's notice, yeah. but the way that it was portrayed on screen was so well done with oh. showing the anxiety and um, through the use of, you know, the handbag and tipping the keys out, not being able to find her keys. Right. Can you take me through those scenes and the, yeah. the moments? Uh, yeah. What it was like on set to film that? Yeah, it's so funny you bring that up because, 
you know, our bodies don't know, like on a cellular, like level, our bodies don't know that we're not experiencing that, you know, whether we feel joy or fear, it's still that heightened state. And so I have to like tell myself like, okay, this is not really happening, Chrissy. <laughs> you're not really going to go and see your son, you know, this you're, you're acting, everything's okay. But, um, you know, uh, there's such a sense of, of urgency and anxiety and, you know, like uncertainty that you don't know. And so you just try to like funnel that and channel that into that. And yeah, the last thing you're thinking about is where the heck your keys are and where in your purse, you're just trying to get into that door. You're just trying to get to that hospital. And there was a one particular, um, one particular take where I went to try to find the keys and the brush through the Bible out of the, <laughs> out of the purse and the Bible lands and I can't get it. It's in like the middle of the, uh, the like sort of top of the car on the and hood. Yep. yeah on the hood thank you and i'm like <laughs> trying to get the bible with the brush they didn't use it ultimately but it was so real because obviously she couldn't reach it but she just had to get it off of the car and it was interesting that it was the bible right so it was um yeah it's it's kind of serendipitous how how things happen that way but you know you just have to stay in that that moment but yeah i mean driving in the car and i did my own stunts everybody just so you know um i was very proud of myself um because it's scary because you're in that state and so yeah you just gotta allow yourself to be willing to go there oh, i could definitely feel that on the screen oh, thank you so much for talking thank to you. hey you guys ladies and gentlemen you're watching hey you guys hey you guys huh hey, you guys. is yeah. that from the goonies it is indeed, yeah. nice hey, hey.